When you think of Hearthstone, what is the first card that comes to your mind? Usually that card is going to be super iconic to either you as a player or to the game itself. And that's exactly what this video is. The most iconic cards when it comes to Hearthstone. And if you did not know, most of these cards are subscribed to this channel. Even Ragnaros. Why aren't you? Speaking of Ragnaros, of course, we're going to start off with the Fire Lord himself. He has been in the game all the way since Hearthstone Classic and was one of the meta definers in the game. It was also just really iconic due to the fact that his randomness and the ability to win games on a coin flip really made him as one of the most iconic cards in Hearthstone. Also, when it comes down to animations, he has a really good one. Of course, his voice line when he gets played is fantastic. And just in case you were wondering, he was one of the most played cards of all time when it came to the early days of Hearthstone. Make sure you let me know with a comment down below what card you think is the most iconic. I can't wait to read it. You know I can't make a video talking about iconic cards without mentioning the pinnacle of randomness, Yog saron Introduced back in Whispers of the Old Gods, this was probably a lot of people's favorite card just because of the amount of randomness and just wackiness it brought to their game of Hearthstone. It turned out when you cast a bunch of random spells, at least to a lot of really good memories and a lot of bad memories but overall will keep a very special place in a lot of hearthstone players heart because of just what the card did and it was beloved by so many that they brought a different version of him back with not only hearthstone battlegrounds but madness in the dark moon fair being iconic is not always a good thing because sometimes you're remembered as probably one of the most frustrating parts of a hearthstone game and that's exactly what patches the pirate was patches the pirate being one of the meta staples in mean streets of gadison you would constantly hear the r as he shot out of his cannon to deal one extra damage and summon a 1-1. One, one. This card was not only one of the most notorious legendaries in the game, but also one of the best at the time. And I think a lot of people who played during that day still remember what the metagame was like going against that card. Also, for those of you who don't play wild, he is still quite good there. So if you're missing patches, the pirate and want a little bit of nostalgia head over to wild, you'll probably see him quite a bit. Speaking of wild, for those of you who played during whispers of the old gods, probably remember the four band of seven, seven lame wreath faceless see i'm not a monster i'm just ahead of the curve now this card wasn't the absolute amazing card that everyone expected it to be but it did see a lot of play because it turns out a four mana seven seven back in the day was really good and when you compare that to chill when yeti at a four mana four five well uh looks like our yeti is kind of sad the four mana seven seven meme was so prominent back in the day that it probably is still used to this moment and sometimes you will see it in a reddit comment or a twitch meme and that's a pretty iconic card especially for not being a legendary speaking of non-legendary iconic cards let's go back to Hearthstone Classic where Azure Drake was the premier five drop in almost every single deck. The ability to draw a card, get spell power, and develop a pretty decent minion for the cost was, well, pretty freaking good. This card was played so much that the team decided to Hall of Fame it at the time because there was no other cards being played at the five mana slot and they wanted to open up the space quite a bit. That sounds like a pretty iconic card. Speaking of five mana, a card was nerfed to five mana that was pretty iconic which was Leroy Jenkins. Not only was this a very good card in combo decks and aggressive tile decks, but most importantly, it was the voice line, the actual animation when you played it, and that beautiful feeling of seeing it attack your opponent's face. This card was obviously very, very powerful, and I think a lot of people remember the days of just getting smacked by Leroy Jenkins. Also at five mana, we have Zilliax, which is often regarded as the most perfect card ever designed when it comes to Hearthstone, and I think a lot of people could probably agree with that, but I think I think what makes Zilliac such an iconic card is his voice line, the unity, precision, perfection just kind of gets stuck in your head. But it was actually the most played card when it was in the standard formats. And even though it wasn't the flashiest legendary, it did make its mark on the Hearthstone scene as being, well, you know. Zilliax. Now, I think the League of Explorers definitely all need a mention, but no one was more iconic than Reno Jackson. The effect when it was introduced back in the League of Explorers was one of the coolest things we've ever seen added to the game, and it still makes people want to play that type of deck because, well, it feels really good to just get 30 life out of nowhere. I think what makes Reno so special is that this was the first real character that was introduced that was not really canon in the Warcraft lore that they made into a actual real character in Hearthstone. That's a 
pretty difficult thing to do in a card game, but Reno was a perfect showcase of this. They basically did the same thing with Dr. Boom, but Dr. Boom was actually from Warcraft lore, but he also deserves a very special mention in this video because not only was he one of the strongest legendaries to be introduced in Goblins vs. Gnomes, as well as the Boomsday Project, but he has kept being the recurring villain in a bunch of different ways, and his voice line is so iconic that you kind of just remember his voice when you see anything like him, and they also added him as a battlegrounds bartender because he is such an iconic character when it comes to hearthstone speaking of battlegrounds it would be a disgrace to bob if i did not mention him in this video this is a character that is virtually just made up as a bartender in the hearthstone universe but became everyone's favorite bartender when battlegrounds was introduced because of his constant motivation and the idea that he wants you to win remember you're his favorite he, he thinks you're gonna win one of the characters they made into a battlegrounds hero is shutterwalk and i think a lot of people recognize shutterwalk as the most disgusting card ever created in hearthstone and i think that makes him pretty iconic because you either love this card or you absolutely hate him the thing about shutterwalk is that his effect was so unique compared to the rest of the cards we've never really seen such a game-winning effect introduced into hearthstone before and because of the animation length this card definitely ingrained into your mind that well i I hate this card so much I don't want to play against it anymore or God, this is such a fun card. I absolutely love it. Plus, his voice line is fantastic. And if you play Battlegrounds, you can still see Shutterwalk every now and again. In my opinion, the most iconic card is Zephyrus the Great. Due to its very powerful effect of wishing for the perfect card, you could definitely see why I have it on this list because this is probably the most powerful card ever introduced into Hearthstone. It had a really cool animation. It had a really nice effect. And the voice line was also pretty iconic. Zephyrus the Great was also introduced with the reintroduction of the League of Explorers in Savers of Uldum, and the fact that he stood out so much really showcases what an iconic card it was. When it came to combo decks, I think the most notorious combo deck ever introduced was Grim Patron, because not only was the deck very powerful, but the constant voice line of everybody get in here when you were playing the deck or playing against it would quite literally explain why the deck was so iconic. This voice line not only led to songs, but it led to copy pastas in Twitch chat. And I gonna be honest, Grim Patron is probably the voice line I still remember the most from Hearthstone. Mysterious Challenger is definitely another iconic card that was introduced in the grand tournament. Not only did it have a super powerful effect, but I think the voice line and the amount of times you heard it during the day back then was definitely one of the reasons why people remember it so much. I think I also have to mention the cute card introduced into Hearthstone, which is Murloc Tinyfin. Even though it didn't make a big impact on the metagame, it made a huge impact on our hearts. And to me, that's pretty iconic. This whole video was a lie because the only card that matters when it comes to Hearthstone is Boulder Fist Ogre. Let's get real here. Not only is it a very good looking ogre, but it's amazing stats for the cost, and it will forever be known as the most powerful card ever introduced into Hearthstone.